next guest is a Grammy-nominated, multi-platinum-selling comedian. His special, The Good Old Days, is streaming globally on Netflix now. Please welcome to the show, Jeff Foxworthy, everyone. Here, Jeff. I'm thrilled to be here. You yeah. had a, a, a weekend very different uh, than mine. You uh, went on an arrowhead hunting trip, which <laughs> I, I didn't know you could even do. Oh, I go all over the country. Okay. Yeah. And so, are there hot spots for arrowheads? Yeah, there's well, there's places like where they had better material. Okay. Because uh, I have a farm in Georgia, but we have courts. They're just not very pretty. And then I have friends in Arkansas that have this beautiful flint, and they just live in a like a hot spot. So we swap off. They come to my farm and. Have fun, and then I go to there. And what's the process of going about uh, arrowhead hunting? I, I would imagine just looking down at the ground a lot, right? It's, you would be good at it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's pretty much, they, they have to live near water sources. Uh, so you're looking for creeks or rivers at like an elevated flat spot. And it's like, I would never dig like a grave. I, that's bad mojo. Yeah. But you're, you're finding like their knives and their tools. They're, that you know, or, and some of them, like, I found one this weekend that's 10,000 years old. That's incredible. Like perfect shape. So. And so uh, you have a farm in Georgia, you mentioned, 3,000 acres. Do you find, are there things you unearth there on your own personal farm? Uh, not like bodies or anything, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I have, uh, we plant about three or 400 acres, and then I have a, a blueberry orchard. I have a greenhouse. I have a big garden. I have, I started, uh, to when COVID hit, my daughter bought me a beehive. And I was like scared to death, but we started raising bees. Really? And doing honey. So. And how's your honey? Is it is it a, is it oh, a tasty honey? Oh, my honey's honey? hot. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, mean, I feel like I keep walking into these. <laughs> no, you. It's I, good. You, you know, uh, you, you know, you live in uh, Georgia now, and obviously, you spent a, a big chunk of your career out in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, being a being a country boy, being from Georgia. Like, what was it like in your years in L.A.? Oh, I didn't. I didn't blend in very well. Uh, <laughs> When I had a sitcom, we used to film next to Seinfeld. Yeah. And uh, it, and I, I, when Ram first came out with that truck, I thought, well, that's a cool looking truck. And I actually went to Beverly Hills Dodge and I said, I want to buy a truck. And they were like, to drive? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want a truck. And so I would pull into work at my truck and Seinfeld would come pulling in in one of his 50 Porsches <laughs> next. He'd like, this is, this is good morning, loser. You know, it was. Uh, <laughs> So yeah. Yeah. Well, you stuck by you stuck by what was true for you. No. I did. I did. I stuck to my roots. So, so. forty. You've been doing comedy for forty years, and I'm yeah. I haven't been doing it that long, but I'm still I haven't been doing it a while. And one of the funniest things to me is when you can still be wrong about a joke until you do it. You find out when you do it in front of an audience. Do you still find that forty years in? Yeah. I because uh, I've done it in every form. I've done page a day calendars for thirty something years. I've written twenty something books. Stand up, the thing that fascinates me about it is if you laid carpet for 30 years, you would know, hey, when I get to the corner, this is what I do. When I get to after 30, I still don't know what people are going to laugh at. I know. It would, doesn't that amaze you? It's and fascinating, so, yeah. And so I don't want to go like on a Saturday night because they laugh at everything. I want to go like on a Monday or Tuesday night, 30 people there. <laughs> yeah. And I take boxes. I take three boxes, and it's, they're labeled gold, silver and certificate of appearance. <laughs> and I just have these, these cards with these ideas. But if you and I were walking in and you said, pick the four that are gonna work the best, yeah. I would still be dead wrong on two of them. I bet that is a great, by doing that and by giving the audience that power, I bet they take it more seriously. They, and, oh, and they they're don't, totally oh, yeah. invested in it, yeah. yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm like, you know, like something, and I can always tell the, the terrible ones go in certificate of appearance. And I always know because the only person I hear laughing is my wife in the back of the room. <laughs> but then I try to argue with them. I'm like, well, did I maybe not set it up well? Did you, did you not understand what I was saying? And they're like, no, it's not funny. Put it yeah. in the certificate yeah, of appearance. Yeah, there's nothing so. worse than when they're like, no, we get it. Yeah, it's not funny. We hate it. Yeah. yeah. No, your wife laughing in the back, is that because she's your number one fan or she enjoys watching you bomb? Loves watching me bomb. Loves watching, loves watching yeah. me bomb. Like she'll get in the car, she goes, That thing about your grandmother, nobody laughed. That was not. <laughs> I told you that wasn't funny, but you wouldn't listen to me. 
It's so funny. I, you know, I, I don't know uh, what your wife's uh, background is professionally, but my wife has nothing to do with comedy. And so there are times where she will say the same thing. That's not going to work. And, and I do kind of, you know, impress upon her, like, look, I am the one who does I'm the work. expert. And yeah. then, uh, and then I'll come I bet home. she's always right. And I'll come home and I will, you know, I'll have an audio recording of the show. And she'll go, how'd that joke go? And I'm like, not bad. And she's like, let me hear it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it, it, it ate it. It ate it hard. All right, so let me ask you this. Where do you come up with most material? I think just over the course of the day, I think. Usually I just have to be alone and have to be quiet. Hey, yeah, you need quiet. Yeah. Like, and, and maybe this is why. I bet I'd think of 80% of the stuff in the shower. Yeah, it does quiet it down. I, and I have a pad, like, on my bathroom counter where I write it. But I have spent the last 37 years coming out of the shower and, and saying to my wife, is this funny? And... <laughs> It's when she says yes, and I haven't even said anything yet. That's <laughs> when it. But she has great instincts. Yeah. About. I mean, she'll go. That's no. That's not. Funny. Yeah. And, and then that you know that's the part about it that is so valuable is they're closer to what matters, which is an audience. Yeah. Whereas. Well, and I don't know, but I always assume the audience is right if they say it's yes, not funny. I agree. I you know, and sometimes you'll throw something out and you think this is stupid, and then people snot on themselves, and you're yeah. like. <laughs> Really? I, really? That's funny? So I guess stand-up is, that's why it's fascinating. It's like, to me, it's like the woman I can't figure out, yeah. you know? Which makes her really interesting, because yeah. I can never quite figure her out. I think that is a, that's a good way of saying it. You uh, talk about the, uh, this is, you've talked obviously a lot about the process of writing, but also there's the performance of it. And you talk about one of the dangers of having a big meal uh, before a show, and I'm assuming this is something that you learned uh, from experience. Well, yeah. Well, like for, for me, I I feel like it makes you sluggish. That, yes. So I never eat before a show. I'm always hungry. But I did a lot of things with Larry the Cable Guy, and so we're up in Chicago, and and I said, and I, I, we were doing a show together in a theater, and I said, Have you ever had Chicago pizza? I don't like it. Only like New York pizza. And I said. <laughs> Well, have you ever tried it? No, never tried it. I said, well, dude, you got to try it before. So I get my phone. There's a Lou Malinati's. Yep, you know, the best, the Love Lou. Love Lou's. But I love New York pizza. So I, I call Lou Malinati's, and they actually deliver it to the theater door. Well, anybody, this thing's like eating a slice of pie. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like that It's like thick. a pizza high-rise. Yeah, yeah, it's a pizza high-rise. So you can, I mean, even if I'm hungry, I can only eat one. Yeah. So I cut Larry a slice. I said, here, just try it. That's pretty good right there. He ate three quarters of the pizza, and then he went on stage. Jeff made me eat this pizza. And I'm burping into the microphone. Well, a cautionary tale, a cautionary yes, tale. Yes. Hey, uh, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on the special yeah. and the entire career. It's an honor. You guys. Jeff Foxworthy, The Good Old Days is streaming globally on Netflix now.